boys and girls, today we're going to continue practicing to become writers. We've been talking about using our pictures and words to share an idea about something that really happened to us. Yesterday, I shared about when I was a little girl and I met a new friend at the park and we shared a popsicle. You can tell it's real because I added details to my drawing. I labeled my picture. I wrote a sentence at the bottom. And I thought about something that really happened to me. But today, I want to teach you that you can also use your imagination to draw and write. Today, I'm going to read you a story about a little boy named Harold. He uses a crayon and his imagination to draw lots of things. So we're going to read to find out what Harold draws. Now I'm going to share this story with you also in a video, but I wanted to read it with you today. So we can practice drawing from our imagination. Harold and the Purple Crayon by Crockett Johnson. Harold and the Purple Crayon. Here's the title page. It says the title of the book again. There's a little picture of Harold right over here. One evening, after thinking it over for a long time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. I don't see a moon up here. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight. Whoops. And he needed something to walk on. Let's look at those two. He drew a moon and he needed something to walk on. I wonder what he's drawing, what he's imagining that he's drawing. Maybe a sidewalk? He made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost. And he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. Oh, I see, the path goes this way. Wow, what an imagination Harold has. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on his long straight path. So he left the path for a shortcut across a field and the moon went with him. The shortcut led to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. Do you see a forest? He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. Harold uses his imagination to draw a tree in the forest. It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red, but he only has a purple crayon. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. Wow, what an imagination Harold has. It was a terribly frightening dragon. He's a good artist, he added lots of detail. It even frightened Harold. He backed away. His hand, holding the purple crayon, shook bumps right there. Suddenly he realized what was happening. Hmm, what do you imagine that looks like? What do you think is happening? By then, Harold was over his head in an ocean. Oh no. Now I want you to stop and think, is he really in the ocean or is he imagining? He came up thinking fast. What could he be drawing? And in no time he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. He quickly set sail. He drew a sail. And the moon sailed along with him. There's the moon. After he sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach wondering where he was. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics and he thought of a pic and the thought of a picnic 
made him hungry. So he laid out a nice simple picnic lunch and there was nothing but pie. But there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold, Harold liked best. I want you to imagine for a minute, if you were drawing your own picnic, what would you draw to eat? Nine different kinds of pie, I wonder? When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot of pie left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. So Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. I love his drawing of a porcupine. It's one of my favorites. And off he went, looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the further he could see. So he decided to make a, the hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought, he could see the windows of his bedroom. He was tired and he felt he ought to be going to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. Do you think he'll be able to? But as he looked down over the other side, he slipped. He didn't have the other side of the mountain drawn. And there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. But luckily, he kept his wits and with his purple crayon, he made a balloon and he grabbed onto it. And he made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. But none of the windows was his window. He tried to think of where his window ought to be. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. I see some rectangles. He made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. I wonder if he'll ever find his window. He decided to ask a policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him. And he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in bed. Then suddenly Harold remembered, he remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. It was always right outside, right around the moon. And then Harold made his bed he got in it and he drew up the covers. The purple crayon dropped on the floor and Harold dropped off to sleep.